So it's just the two of us, Ben. Just the two of us. We can we make can it. Just the two of us. You and I. <laughs> uh, Samantha, who usually joins us on the uh, the Lucky Dip video, is not well today. So we are on our own, mate. Like the olden days. Like the olden days. The bad old days. <laughs> before we were before we were a good looking video. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, one third. <laughs> one third um, two thirds. Two well, thirds. Uh, that's unfortunate. Needless to say, we hope Samantha gets better very soon. And let's do some lucky dipping. Uh, g'day, everybody. This is where we just dip into a bowl of movie titles and see where the conversation leads us. And um, we are from the Good Movie Monday podcast. If you go back on Monday's episode, we had Neil Blomkamp, the director, uh, as our guest. And we talked about cyber techie kind of movies, movies that we'd love to see Neil remake. And um, it's a whole lot of fun. Do you want to go first or should I? Uh, you, you do it. All right. So, got Asked. the bowl. Was it, no, was it um, Lucky Dip? Very dangerous. You very go first. Dangerous. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Ah, Ricky and Pete. Ricky and Pete. That's the Nadia Tass movie. Is that the Brian Brown? Uh... No. No, what's the what's what? What am I thinking of? Where Brian Brown is trapped on the desert island with the? Uh... Oh, isn't that Far and East or something like that? Far East. Is that Far East? Well, anyway, oh no, I know the one you mean. It's um, and he's got the poster has his head in the sand or something like that. No, no, that's Sweet Talker. That's uh, okay. that's an excellent film. No, that's not. <laughs> I mean, not that, not that I'm saying Ricky and Pete isn't, but I'm sure he did okay. one with the two just the two names. Well, you look that one up. Ricky and Pete is the movie that Nadia Tass made in between Malcolm and The Big Steel, and it's the kind of the forgotten film amongst the three of them. It was Dear Claudia was the one I was thinking of. Ah, uh, right. They're, they're the mail. They fly the mail plane. Yeah, I know the one. They're and on the island or whatever it is, and all they've got is the mail to read. Speaking of Claudia, Claudia Carvin in the Big Steel. Um, but no, Ricky and Pete's the one she made in between Big Steel and Malcolm, and it kind of got forgotten. And it's about a brother and sister. The brother is like a weird, eccentric, almost on the spectrum inventor. Very similar to Malcolm, but a little bit trendier. Yeah. And they go on a yeah. they go they go on, existed. They go on a road trip, um, I think, to Broken Hill or Mount Eliza, one of those kind of places, and just interact with all the kooky characters. It's a weird movie, as as was you know Malcolm, I guess. But I felt like I felt like this one tried to cash in on Malcolm a little bit, to be honest with you, because of the whole inventive stuff. You know, the inventor making weird contraptions and. The whole oh, thing with um, it's our good mate Steve Kearney. I've met, oh, I've yeah. met Steve Kearney numerous <laughs> times. I didn't know that he was. I, I would have asked him about this uh, had I known this was what he was. I knew he was an actor, but we're like he was, he was. We were talking to him about producing stuff, um, and I knew he was an actor, but I, I didn't know any of the stuff. Like, you know, yeah, it's the movie's like a hybrid. If you can imagine Malcolm crossed with that Alex Proyas film, Spirits, like the Gremlins in the Sky, whatever it's called, it's kind of like right in between there. And um, you know where Malcolm, the the sort of draw card was the card that split in half. Yeah. In this in this one, the draw card was kind of him driving the car from the roof, Mr. Bean style. Right. Before Mr. Bean did it. It was on the poster, right? It could have been. It's, it's had it. I only know the Amer the American. I only know the American DVD cover. Right. Yeah. No. With the guitar or whatever is the MGM. Yeah, horrible. No, no, the original poster is him on that car in the middle of the desert with the two sticks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do know that. Yeah. I've never I like it. I, to track it down. I like it, but it doesn't doesn't hold a candle to um either the Big Steel or Malcolm. You know, I watched um I watched that Umbrella Blu-ray of Big Steel last week. Oh, such I could never get enough of that film. I can never get enough of it. No, I but do you know I what? Need to pick that up. What really stuck out to me this time, and every time I watch it, there's little things that I pick up on. But just the soundtrack, man, that opening "Mental as Anything" song with the montage at the high school, yeah, just the best. How much does that hit you in the feels, nostalgic wise? Yeah, totally. Like everything about that film, like all that, all that talk about the Monaro and yeah. and stuff, and the um, <laughs> what's his name, Vin or Vin, yeah, Van. He's, 
Van, Van, the yeah. best friend. I'm like, Jesus, like, like every time I said, I just think of Home Sweet Home and those kind of, you know, Miles Buchanan TV shows and stuff. And I'm just, oh, Kings and Kingswood Country and stuff. And you're like, this is a, this is a racist Australia that, uh, well, doesn't exist. They, it feels like, like they, we were um, racist back then. <laughs> Steve Bisley's character actually calls him Walk Boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we were, there was, there didn't seem to be as, uh, mean spiritedness behind the racism well the thing i think in yeah. f- in fairness um the whole the whole greek italian wog thing was embraced by them i think in in order to assimilate you know in order to get along they kind of took on that in a in their stride i guess is the best way to put it yeah and they they turned it into a an endearing almost endearing kind of quality like you had wogs out of work and you know the wog boy and you know, acropolis now and all that kind of stuff they really owned it yeah they uh, well they <laughs> they uh, reclaimed it or yeah and even now i i work with a couple or quite a few greek people and it's all wog talk mate it is all like they call themselves wogs and you know i love it like i i really love it i think it, it does take me back to the 80s when it didn't feel offensive at least from my perspective it probably was in a lot of ways well, but th- I guess I think the racism was a lot more um, general. Like now, like like now we, you know, theoretically we know better. Yeah. So that the you know generally people aren't, or if they are, they keep it to themselves, kind of thing. It's it's non-verbal. So the what's left are the really aggressive racists. Yeah. Yeah. Like where the uh, <laughs> they're the scum that have risen to the surface. Yeah. What's left of the uh, the yeah you know, the um, the more the the much more insidious. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> what's, good, what's the, what's the word they call them? Like the normal, the normalized racists. Well, the, the, a good example of what we're talking about is that movie. They're a weird mob, right? Yeah, Where, yeah. like, you watch that, and it's you know, it's very racist when you watch it. However, it's he's the hero of the movie. Like, yeah. You know, like it's 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 making fun of him, but it's making fun of us at the same time. It's more making fun of of us, yeah. Like yeah. That's, he's a fish out of water story, but the 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 racism in that is more like is almost like a lack of, it's a lack of knowledge of who who and what he is. Well, like that's the, the thing. Like, ah, from Greece, are you? Or like from Italy, are you? Ah, like they really, they're like they're stupid. Yeah, well, they're, the they're, people... they're curious yeah. as well. So they're, they're curious because yeah. they don't understand. They didn't have the internet. They couldn't just, you know, yeah. all they knew were travelogues, actual magazines that had photos of, you know, things. We didn't yeah. even have ethnic food back then. But um, anyway, that's a huge digression. Yeah. <laughs> John Down, but <laughs> let's talk talking. for a second. They're a weird mob. I do love it. That that scene in the bar when the guy's saying to him, mate, it's your shout. Yeah. Why I shout? <laughs> <laughs> it's your shout. <laughs> this bloke doesn't want to shout. <laughs> I love it. It's good. Anyway, go ahead and um, pluck one out. All right. <laughs> Romper stomper. <laughs> so this, is, this is England. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It looks like. Yeah. Oh, do we want to talk about Hocus Pocus? We um we kind of spoke about that the other week. Yeah, let's. Uh, I'll just do it. <laughs> I will save it for the uh, next week's podcast next week, when we talk uh, about. Spooky kids movies. What's this one? Uh, the Sure Thing. Oh, what a and classic! Yes, um, I only stumbled across that again last week because Chloe and I were talking about The Princess Bride. Um, very funny movie, and uh, <laughs> not a comedy. <laughs> Should I put that poll out to the people? Is The Princess Bride a comedy? Yeah, but um. What do you think? Is it a comedy? But I went, um, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole of Rob Reiner promoting Princess Bride, and there's one where he starts talking about the sure thing because I think that's what he had done before it, and um, got right. me thinking. I need to watch that again. That's a great movie. Like it is one of John, like John Cusack had. Like at the time, there would have been the big three were the sure thing, uh, better off dead, better off dead, one and, crazy summer. Um, uh, well, Long Crazy Summer is great, but I was gonna, I was gonna say say anything with the three big, the three big ones. But yeah, like One Crazy Summer and what's the other one? Hot Pursuit were like, you know that 
young John Cusack era kind of like that each one of them is excellent like and he's excellent in them like they were, they're the movies that you know the movies that made him and I pretty much think like up until like gross point blank is his return to that kind of movie and I think he's been trying to you know distance himself for that is well, hasn't no, no, no. He he has four. said um, in an interview somewhere that he believes he's only made like four good movies in his whole career, and I'm pretty sure. Oh it, no, say more than that. He's in like he's in. Like, no, we would agree, but he doesn't. Like he well, thinks surely he would he would have to include like eight eight men out and. No, he. Let me try to recap. He he thought gross point blank definitely. Yeah. Um. Then there was. I think say anything. Right. Then high fidelity. Okay. Then I'm trying to think what another one was. No, I can't recall. I can't recall. Better off finding videos of him talking about it. But um, yeah, in, in, in his estimation, he's only made like four or five great films or good films. I guess maybe maybe as he, with him as the lead, but he's in like he's got supporting roles in. Like a bunch of John Hughes. No, but we agree. We agree on this, but it's just, it's just his perception. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love mean, I him. He, I, I think he's great. I've heard he's a complete asshole, but I've, yeah. <laughs> and like I think we've said before, there must be a stipulation in his contract these days. He has to wear a black baseball cap in everything. Yeah. That's his thing. <laughs> the thing that's outrageous is he's not balding. It's not like it's a thing to cover up a patch. Or anything like that, and you're like, you son of a bitch. The hats belong to the people who. Uh, his hat, his his hair is beginning to look more like a hairpiece, though. Well, I think his that's his his hairstyle has been like that his entire life. Like that's just what his hair looks like. You know, like that guy. <laughs> who's that guy in Goodfellas? They end up he ends up frozen in the back of the meat truck, but he was in that. He's got that weird. He's got a really weird, like almost Gene Simmons, but like a perm. Yeah. Gene Simmons, yeah. Haircut. And it's like it comes out the sides and goes like that. And he's in that, um, he's in that jerky boys. He was the uh, inspiration for that gang, that mobster character in The Simpsons. You know the yeah yeah, yeah. that guy. I don't know what his name is, but um, uh, yeah, his his hair is. It's hard to believe it's real. It's like um, what is it? Brillo like steel wool? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the sure thing. Uh, like I love the short thing. Daphne Zeniga, like you know, yep, it's great. He's great. Do you reckon? Do you reckon Sex Drive was a remake of that? Sex Drive, the one with um Seth Green, I think was in it as an Amish guy. I don't know who the lead was. He's sort of a flash in the pan actor, but it's like a, an American Pie style movie from about maybe ten years ago. Oh no, I don't. I don't remember it. You would love it. It's a very funny movie, but I watched it the whole time thinking this is the sure thing. Yeah, right. Oh no, no, I've got to, I've got to check it out. I'm just trying to look at uh, Frank uh, Severo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's he plays uh, yeah Frankie Carbone in and he's like in this like now his haircut he's got a haircut that looks like uh, Maxwell Smart's haircut Don <laughs> Adams. No, I reckon that's him. <laughs> like all these, like, there's, pictures, there's pictures of him on IMDb. So he's he's gone from like the 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 fluffy steel wool to the more the green scow pads. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you know, the, 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 there's that scene in um, which was a revelation to me. There's that scene in in Annie the, the Annie remake with Jamie Fox. She walks in on Jamie Fox and he's got like the wig and his, but he's like his hair is like shaved, like his head's shaved, like to like a one, and yet. It's a wig, and I'm like, how do you make a wig like that? <laughs> like, I just, I was completely blown away. <laughs> and that's what he's, he's, the wig that he's got now looks like because his hair is like a, it's like a helmet in Goodfellas. <laughs> like he can stop bullets. <laughs> right. But All yeah, right. I love the sure thing. If you haven't yes. seen it, check it out or kill yourself, whatever. And, and, and get onto Sex Drive. All right. And get onto Sex Drive. I know I will. Oh, done that before. <clears throat> Enemy mine. I reckon I've thrown that back into the bowl. Where Boy, are the mi- twice. Where are the mines, mate? Where are the mines? I don't understand. Where the- There's no mines in that film. The dressmaker. Jeez, your handwriting is nicer than mine. <laughs> I look yeah, at my... Oh, I can't read it. <laughs> I don't, I don't the, know. Dre- 
I'm going to be uh, a really shallow, typical bloke right now um, because it just reminded me, I'm watching um, Mayor of Easttown at the moment, you know, the Kate Winslet detective show on Foxtel. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it is incredible. It is like it's the American equivalent of um, Broadchurch. Broadchurch. Like it's, yeah, really, it's really good. But, man, episode one. She has a sex scene with um, Guy Pearce. It's like, man, love me some Kate Winslet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, mate, I have had the biggest crush on Kate Winslet since Heavenly Creatures. I got quite angry at Peter Jackson because I was determined as a 16-year-old that I would be the one that puts her on the map. Right. And um, he came <laughs> along with James Cameron, I should say. James Cameron took her from... With the um, Titanic. Heavenly Creed <laughs> Titanic. And yeah, but I've had a crush on her ever since. And the older she gets, the sexier she gets to me. And then just to see her with her pants off on top of Guy Pierce grinding away, I'm like, oh man. Jeez. <sighs> Lucky guy. I was just um funnily enough, I was I've been listening to this um audio book called Dusty's Diaries, and it's a post-apocalyptic kind of they're not zombies. They're in the book. They're called shroomheads. They've been infected by some kind of fungus that um, eats part of the brain and turns them into kind of raving uh, cannibal kind of uh, creatures. And in it, he talks about um, he talks about how he, he likes Kate Winslet, but one of his daughters, like it's this guy, is stuck in a bunker like under his under his house for two years, and he's like he's got limited uh, jerk off material. It's just like it was, the problem is he had one like he always liked he always liked the idea of Kate Winslet, but every time he looked at her, he, he, she looked a lot like his youngest daughter. So he's like, <laughs> it's just uh, I can't think of Kate Winslet that way. I'm not going to think of Kate Winslet that way. I I read an article with her about um that sex scene in in the new show, and she's very proud of standing up for you know antibody shaming and all that kind of stuff and apparently when she filmed that the director said to her look you know we can remove that tummy flab in post and she's like don't you fucking dare she's like leave it like she goes i know exactly how many lines are on my face and i want to see every single one of them on the poster you know yeah, right. um but yeah, the, the dressmaker i love the dressmaker that was the return of jocelyn morehouse i haven't seen it i've i've heard nothing but good things except the only person i heard who didn't like it, i think was richard wolstencroft <laughs> it's usually a good indication that uh, it, it's a good film yeah i heard that it's like a, a neo-western it is and it's it, it get it goes to some very dark places like and it's it's got a particular scene of violence that is just fucking shocking um is it somebody know. beating the fuck out of liam hemsworth <laughs> no liam hemsworth's not in it oh yes he is it, I, I thought you meant chris hemsworth yes no liam hemsworth isn't it it's the... yeah that's right um no, but it's also, I think Kate Winslet does one of the top five best Aussie accents that a, a foreigner has done. Right. She's, she's got a bang on Aussie accent. Um, yeah, but it's, and Hugo Weaving is fantastic. You know, it's, yeah, it's really good. And I love Jocelyn Morehouse. You know, she, had, she, she was forced to drop off the radar to look after her autistic child for, you know, to raise him for 15 years. You know, he was very heavily on the spectrum. And, um, Who's she married to? She's married to... Richard Wilkins. <laughs> no, the guy who directed um, Muriel's Wedding. Richard Wilkins. Oh, fuck. I'm spewing. PJ Hogan. PJ Hogan. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they came to sort of an agreement that he would carry on making some movies just because he had a higher profile. And um, she stayed home looking after the kid. But she, The Dressmaker was her return, and it was great. Because previously she did Proof with Hugo Weaving and Russell Crowe and How to Make an American Quilt and may have been another one in there somewhere. I went in with such – no, hang on. Yeah, How to Make, a, how to make an American Quilt and Divine, uh, Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood were two movies I went in with high hopes and was brutally disappointed by both. <laughs> yeah, um. How to Make an American Quilt to me at the time felt like a, a straight-to-video kind of movie or a movie that Australia sort of missed. Yeah, well, it was... I mean, it did get a theatrical release because I think I saw I saw both of them theatrically, but it was... I think they tried, they tried to... It was... I felt like it was supposed to be, like, saccharine sweet. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it kind of was, but they went... They It was over the top. You know, it was supposed to be, like, a fried green tomatoes kind of movie. Yeah. 
and it, it just fell short of the mark. Nevertheless, it, it, it would have set her up in a very comfortable position in Hollywood. She had potential to make a whole lot more and um, you know, just fate stepped in and had other, other ideas. But yeah, Dressmaker, amazing return to form. Got to meet her at the AFCA Awards when, when the film won a few years ago. And I can't wait to see what she's got up her sleeve next. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe a, uh, a COVID-esque thriller about uh, a person with a demon inside them. No, hang on. <laughs> That's Neil Blomkamp. Could you imagine That's... if it switched? Like, and she she did, like, District 9, and he did uh, The Dressmaker. Like, Could you imagine how, if he like, he remade How to Make an American Quilt? Yeah, and she remade District 9. Like, like give them the same script, the same basic <laughs> script, and go, okay, now you guys do your versions. Like, that would be fascinating. That would. I mean, that's the experiment that you, like we've spoken about before, that's the Schindler's List versus Cape Fear. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I reckon if um, Martin Scorsese had have directed Schindler's List, it would have felt more like The Pianist, the Roman Polanski I, film. I think it would have been a different film. Like the, it, it would have been one of those like Inglorious Bastards and Alternate History one where the Jews, like they find machine guns <laughs> and just. It was, it was based on a famous book though. <laughs> yeah. But still like, you know, and the, there are like Nazi sympathizers, like collaborators in meat trucks <laughs> and stuff. Mate, like they, this is this is the, the yeah. You know. <laughs> this is proof we need Sam on board because we've never we've never had as big a tangents as this. <laughs> well, I cool. Yeah, I love a good tangent. I mean, this 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 video is all about the tangents. We don't really stick on the films we pick out of the bowl. Who went last? Dressmaker. I did. You you go. Trying to get something from the bottom of the barrel here. We'll make this the last one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Vamp. <laughs> Look, I could read that fine. What's your point? <clears throat> Vamp. What a great movie. Grace Jones. What a Grace Jones' finest films. Yes. I, for the, when, you, when you first drew that out, I'm thinking Vamps. Right. The new one. <laughs> With the, the one with Alicia Silverstone and Kristen Ritter? Is that Penelope Spheris, I think, directed? Or someone like that? Martha Coolidge, maybe? Someone like that? Maybe, yeah. yeah anyway. No, no, this was definitely the Grace Jones, Didi Pfeiffer uh, vampire film in the set in the strip club, which is a great... Like, it's... I feel like that's where, you know, Tarantino got the idea from, from Dusk Till Dawn. <laughs> like it's a There's a tangent. Life. There's a tangent from Dusk Till Dawn. Is, um, that was originally written as a Tales from the Crypt movie really that was supposed that was supposed to be the third movie and um for some reason it just got pawned off as a standalone same same applies to the frighteners that was supposed to be the third installment of the tales from the crypt saga like what would they have they would have had to add a a 10 minute or five minute intro of the crypt keeper and a five and a you know two minute outro and it could have been a tales from the crypt movie Well, well that's the point and the thing is i think bob zemeckis um, when he when he had the script in his hand, he just thought to himself, this would make such a better standalone film. Like, we can market this one in a better way. And then he gave it to Peter Jackson. But, but um, I think the same with Demon Knight. Maybe not so, not so much a Bordello or Blood, but Demon Knight was pretty good. No, they're both good. Um, but what I'm, what I'm working my way towards saying is that the third movie they ended up making, Ritual, you know, was a script that they just picked up off the shelf and wasn't made for a Tales from the Crypt, but they added the Crypt Keeper to the front and the end of it. And um, it was an absolute mess. It had Craig Schaefer, and it was when um, Jennifer Grey debuted her new nose. Tim Curry was in it. I like. I look. I like her new nose. Don't it's essentially it, it's a remake of um, White Zombie, I think. Oh, which I, I actually really like White Zombie. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I like Ritual. Um, however, when they tacked on the Crypt Keeper, they used like the like one of the the second tier Crypt Keeper puppets that was made more for the dvd menus and things like that as opposed to the real one that could move a lot yeah right. and they put they put dreadlocks on him and gave him a jamaican accent and you know it's it's funny but it's it's the comparison between that and demon knight and bordello of blood it's you know had they gone from dust to dawn it would have been an incredible trilogy i need to check this out i haven't seen it yeah uh, but uh, i mean i hate as a rule i hate craig sheffer but uh 
Like I like like Voyage of the Rock Aliens. He's great, and uh, but I'm, he's too in movies like um, some kind of wonderful and uh, uh, what's the other one? Like the love is it the love letter? He's in one of those other. He's in a couple of those other kind of um, John Hughes era kind of teen Look, romance movies, and he's I, just an asshole. I'm not a fan of his, but I've enjoyed things he's in, like stuff like um, River Runs Through It. I liked him in that, and. Nightbreed. I really, I like most people disagree. Nightbreed, most people disagree with me, but I loved him in the Hellraiser Inferno. You know, the first of the standalones. Yeah, right. Jeez. Which that movie in itself is a great standalone movie. Like, if it didn't have Pinhead in it, it'd be like, this is fucking incredible. He's good in that. Um, right. But yeah, it's. Um, have you seen like was it my new is it my new gun? Is that the one he's in with um, Diane Lane? Movie. Which I've yeah. never, I've never seen. I tried to. Or is it James LeGrosse? Maybe I'm thinking of James LeGrosse. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, so that that was just me yeah, tying in from Dusk Till Dawn to Tash and the Crypt and Vamps <laughs> or Vamp. Have you seen Vamp? When's the last time you saw it? Oh, VHS days. Yeah. I remember the VHS. It was one of those ones that used to always have a striking cover that you know you always looked at when you were a kid and you picked them up. Yeah. Um. I don't remember a lot about it. I've probably seen more YouTube clips from it over the years than I than I would recall the actual film. Yeah, because right. I hate Grace Kelly. I hate Grace Kelly so much. So really? it's always I, love it's, Grace Kelly. I mean, she's insane. Yeah, she is. It's painful for me to watch her because I just don't like real like people that are assholes in real life, and like they kind of promote that assholishness, and she did, and I just it always rubbed me the wrong way as a kid. It's like, why are you such a nasty person? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that she was an asshole. Like uh, my memories of her is that is, is like a, her as a real person is her character in is it coming to America or um, what's the maybe it's the what's the Eddie Murphy one where he's in um, Distinguished Gentleman or whatever it is where he, she's like the she, she tries to have sex with him and scares him. Well, just she's so full on. Go and find the the infamous interview. I think it might have been Parkinson or something where she was just hard work and just rude and, yeah, obnoxious. And she's probably plain to her character, but that kind of shit rubs me the wrong way. It's like, I just don't have an interest in supporting your work if that's the kind of person you are. Yeah. I mean, like, I, funnily enough, I have seen, like, I remember watching this, I think it's Parkinson or the guy who replaced Parkinson or who was filling in for him, like, with an interview with the Bee Gees, and he got the name of a song wrong, and... um you know, Barry stormed off. The two, <laughs> the, two the twins are just kind of like, uh, I guess we have to go. <laughs> um, like, oh, Barry, that, come on, let's all be adults. And he's, that, and he's, that's like that fantastic interview that Jamie Lee Curtis did on one of the morning shows in America to promote the new Halloween. And right. the, the like ET or something like that. And the guy goes, So, Jamie Lee Curtis, great to have you here. I love Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, she, and she really put him in his place too. Like, you know, she's very precious about the property and she's like, well, that's the wrong movie and you should know that, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, like, that's just basic, you know, you know courtesy. Yeah. Yeah. And, but she, and that's essentially what she said is like, you know, you've got me on the show to talk about this. You should know that. Yeah. Like, the, at the very least, like the, yeah. the guy who wrote your cue cards <laughs> should know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we didn't really talk about Vamp, but um, I'll I'll probably put it down for a revisit, despite her presence. I think, it's, I think it's definitely. I mean, she's the villain in it, and she's not really in it that much. She is very much a Selma Hayek character from From Dust to Dawn. Like she's a figurehead kind of character, but mm. she's not. She's the uh, she's, Amanda Amanda Donahue of Lair of the White Worm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's in it for a bit, but she's not like the the kind of. She doesn't do much acting in it. Mate, they don't make vampire movies like they did in the eighties. Like they were just great. They were, we actually released one, one that um, nobody talks about, and, and we like this. It's a, it is a, a Monster Pictures title, but it's not a Monster Pictures title that Monster Pictures, as it stands today, still controls. It's own. It's controlled by Bounty, mm -hmm. uh, Bounty Films. It's called Blind Alley. Mm -hmm. It's a Spanish. It's a Spanish a vampire film. Oh, my horror films are in another room, but I have that one. That's great. Yep. It's, yeah, Anna, Anna Diamas, who is now huge, and she stars in this film, and it is like a vamp-esque kind of, you know, older vampire movie, and it's it's really fucking good, like really good, and it's always a disappointment where it, that when, you know, you, you release these movies that 
you don't have the money to really spend on you know marketing muscle but um yeah it's a it's a shame like it was a it's a, it's a really good film definitely worth yeah if you can track down the dvd uh, great 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 era like i mean you even had your, your fright nights of course but um like i even love stuff like once bitten you know lauren lauren Hut, um lauren hutton and jim carrey yeah that's right lauren hutton like lauren hutton tongue, tongue. <laughs> yeah. that'd be great was it beverly hills vamp yep would have been around that time and I, 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 I love um, Fright Night 2. I think that's a fantastic sequel. I don't yeah. know why everyone hates that. It's great. It came out with a coffin box. It's brilliant. On, on <laughs> the, there's always an awkward one to take home with you. <laughs> anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Um, until next week, my friend. Until, until we meet again. Some sunny day. <laughs> <laughs>